What's going on? It's Robert from Copper State Tackle. This is another tournament recap video. I fished the Let's Talk Fishing November 18th at Roosevelt Lake. The tournament was overall fun. There was 45 teams that fished the event. The weather was crazy. It was, um, I don't know, 50, 60 degrees. It was on and off rain all day. And I'm talking like downpouring rain. Then it got hot later in the day. I went up to Roosevelt a couple weeks leading up to the tournament a couple times with different friends. I had to shoot some videos for Berkeley on the new uh, power switch and some other forward facing sonar baits. So I had a good idea of kind of what was going on. But when I was going up there, the weather was still relatively warm. You know, the sun was out, you would get into the high 70s, 80s. You could be in shorts if you wanted to be. I caught a couple fish with a couple buddies of mine just doing various techniques. You know, we were throwing dippers up shallow or, you know, fishing, finding some schools out deep randomly. And that's kind of how I developed my game plan, especially after filming, you know, Daniel and Josh Bertrand out there. Uh, I got really interested in the power switch and I started messing around with that. And I caught a couple um, at different times with a, a buddy of mine while we were out just fun fishing. The weather for tournament day was gonna be this, similar to some of the conditions that I was in during practice. Uh, it was gonna be raining all day, off and on, with some winds, and then the sun was supposed to come out later in the afternoon. The water temp was still the same. It was like 64, 65 in the morning. It got all the way up to like 67 in the afternoon as it warmed up. As, turn, as the tournament began, I picked up one fish really quick on the Berkeley power switch. The beauty of the power switch is you can use it with your forward facing sonar or your 2D sonar and you can just drop it straight down on fish on your graphs and vertical jig them. You can fish it a bunch of different ways but that's how I have been using it. I haven't had a lot of time behind it but I picked up a fish real quick. I think it was, you know, maybe a pound or two but it was first thing in the morning so I was, I was pretty confident that I was going to catch uh, you know, a, a handful of fish all day long. My second fish came, you know, in the morning as well. Uh, I caught it on an A-Rig, um, just a regular A-Rig, and I was using the Divine uh, paddle tail swim baits. And I use the Divine sometimes just because they're a little bit different. A lot of people use Kitex or, you know, different types of paddle tails. And I, I feel like these pair really well with the six Sense jig heads that they make for the A-Rigs. They have a nice screw lock on them and it helps to get that bait on there so they don't rip off all the time. The Six Sense jig heads are really, really nice once you get that bait twisted on the right way. Um, it can be a pain getting that bait on there because you have to thread the bait on and then spin it a couple times and the tail will get caught on like the bend of the hook, but you have to just bend it around and screw it on. Once it's on, you don't need super glue or anything like that. That bait is pretty secure on your A-Rig or if you just throw it as a single paddle tail swim bait. First fish I caught early in the morning on a power switch. The second one I caught on an A-Rig and then the rain started. The rain was, was, it was pouring and it made the bite extremely tough. Uh, I, ran, I ran around the lake, you know, different, different areas, main lake, rivers, and I, I could not get bit. At one point in the day, I was driving through the lake and it was raining as normal, but I was coming up past Windy Hill. Usually you can see where you're going, you know, pretty clearly, even in the rain, but there was like a wall of just like white, it looked like smoke or clouds. I don't know what it was, but I found out real quick, it was just pure rain. It was raining so hard and I was flying down the lake that I had to pull my hood down because it was hurting my forehead with how hard it was raining. At this point in the day, it's getting later. I, I only have two fish in the box. It's probably, I, I remember it was 1.39 exactly because I wanted to make a run to my next spot and I wanted a time to see how long it would take from where, where I was at. I was around Windy Hill to my new spot. Uh, by the time I got up there, it was almost, you know, 140-ish, 150-ish. So I had a 3.30 check-in. And that's where I was started freaking out and I, I kind of was going faster, but I ended up catching all my, the rest of my fish with about like 30 minutes left of, of the day. I pulled up to a tree and I, I, was, I flipped and I was doing some flipping. The funny thing is, is I flipped into a tree and I didn't get bit. So I was pulling it out and I started reeling in and the fish came up over the branch and ate my bait. And that kind of gave me an idea that maybe they started to eat reaction as the weather warmed up, the clouds cleared out, it was a little sunny. I caught my third fish on a reaction innovations, just regular beaver tail. I've talked about it before. 
um, as I was pulling it out. So at this point, I have three fish in the box and I've got about 15, 20 minutes left to go in the tournament. I pull out a, a dipper that I had tied on, you know, from practice and I, I make a cast into this little pocket next to some trees and I catch one. It was about a pound and a quarter, maybe pound 10, I don't know. Uh, I just threw a cold tag on it, threw it in the box and I was telling myself, okay, one more, one more. I make another cast and it was a short and I lost it and I was like, well, it wouldn't count anyway. So I make another cast and I catch my fifth fish, which was another one, 110, I don't know, 120, something like that. I didn't even weigh it. I just measured it, it barely measured, I think 13 inches. So it was my fifth fish and I think I had like five minutes left before I had to leave. So I'm telling myself, okay, I have five minutes. I should go weigh in, make sure I have time. But something told me, you know, just make another cast. So I make another cast and I ended up, I catch another one and I, I flip it into the boat and it actually looks a little bigger than the fifth fish I had just caught. Once I cold out and put the fifth fish in my live well, I looked down and it was 318 and I had a 330 check-in. So I didn't even hit record on, on the last fish and I just end up taking off back to, to weigh-ins. I got to weigh-ins around like 325. Thank God, you know, I got, I got there, you know, with a little bit of time left. I could have made one more cast, but it had ripped my bait the last time. I just decided to take off and come back to weigh-ins. I weighed in 1073, which got me 13th place. Um, I think it was like $141 or something like that. But thank God I had entered the options because I ended up winning, I think they called them mini tees or something like that, where it's like an option. And it basically broke even for the tournament, which was nice. It's always nice getting paid to go fishing. Obviously, when you're fishing the tournaments, you're fishing to win, but I learned a valuable lesson and, you know, lesson is to like never give up and to always, you know, call out your fish, even if you hold them up and just eyeball them, because if I would have not called out that last fish, I wouldn't have got a check. I finished 13th and 12th beat me by 0 0.01 of a pound and the guys below me didn't, I didn't beat them by much more. So if I didn't call out that one fish that was maybe a quarter of a pound, I wouldn't have got a check. And I know for sure that from now on, I'm gonna get a, a nice scale and make sure if it's even an ounce or two bigger, I'm gonna call it out. To recap on the baits that I was using, uh, the first fish I caught them on was the Berkeley Power Switch. I was using the three and a half inch power switch. I think it's like five eighths ounce, but it's a nice shad profile. It's got a jig hook on it. I on my spinning rod. Just vertical fishing, it has this tail on it, which gives it a lot of action, it's real soft. So you can sit there and hover it or you can pop it up and down, whatever you wanna do. I caught my second fish on an A-Rig. These Divine Paddle Tail Baits, you know, the Six Sense makes. I was also using the Six Sense Jig Hook. This Six Sense Jig Hook has a nice screw lock on it. It comes with a nice long shank in a bunch of different sizes and weights. I caught my third fish on a Sweet Beaver, you know, just a little green watermelon uh, with a little blue in it. And then I caught the rest of my fish on a dipper. Um, this is the shad color. I have a bunch of different colors that I use. Depending if the water's stained or clear, you know, I have, I have some that are a little more clear, some that are a little more darker, or some that are very bright. I like to use on my dippers the Ryugi Pierce hook, as I mentioned in another video, but I wanted to, to bring up one point on something that I do. The Ryugi Pierce hook comes with this screw lock. It's not very good. I don't know why they designed it like that, but I changed that out. I go down to Copper State and I get the CPS, their centering pin springs, and you can take out that other lock off that hook and just change these out. The beauty of this one is, is not only is it a spring, but it has a point in the middle that you can put right on the nose of that bait. Once you put it right on the nose of that bait, you just screw it in and it stays locked. You thread your bait through and it's in there good. And I think that helped me a lot because I ended up catching, I think three or four fish towards the end of the day on that dipper. I didn't have a lot of time to change baits out and re-screw re them in. I account my success to that because if they would have just ripped it off, I would have had to get another bait and it would have cut my time. I caught most of my fish within the last five minutes. If I didn't have that bait keeper on there, it would have I would have lost some time and not made that last cast. Overall, it's a good tournament, cash to check. My next tournament I'm gonna fish is the Southwest Custom Tackle back at Roosevelt on December 2nd, I think. And then there's another one at Roosevelt December 9th. So hopefully I can get on them again. Maybe I'll do a little better this time. Thanks for watching as always. For all your tackle needs, go to copperstatetackle.com or go in store. See you next time.